Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Board Game Specialist. We are on episode 88, and I am Melanie. And I'm Carla. And we are going to be talking about car treats because, I mean, a few weekends ago now, uh, Carla, you held your board game convention that we do. I, I use the term we very loosely here that you do and I attend at your <laughs> restaurant. Um, so we're going to be talking a bit about the games we've played there. Now I only attended the one day, so I'm going to be talking about five games played there. And I'm also going to talk about games. I purchased there because I picked up a lot of games. <laughs> it was almost Not as many as I home. thought actually. Because I it had was a more few... than I remembered. Like I had a box yeah. full coming. <laughs> but some of them weren't bought there. You were just picking up from. Yeah, yeah. I was. But it was just like kind of thing. Yeah, so it wasn't like you yeah, not for sure. But it's just what what day. came through the door that night. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a big huge box. box for you of collected things that I picked up, or <laughs> someone picked up for you, or I was lending you, or whatever. So, yeah. But before we get into all that, let's mention our sponsor. So we have a sponsor, which is Games and Couples, part of Oshrat Online Counseling Services. And what's really neat about them is they really concentrate on the Gottman method uh, for couple therapy. And what they've discovered is that board game plays specifically was a great way to put those into practice, especially cooperative games. So in their counseling they use a lot of board games uh to kind of put those principles and therapy training into practice and i think what they do is just amazing yeah that's just so cool i love Mm -hmm. it so we'll have their link in the comments below so be sure to check them out um and let's get started with our car treat um how Mm -hmm. many people attended do do you have Um, a number we had 22 this time like in total nice. between both days, like some just came Saturday, some just came Sunday, but then some came both. Yeah. I think that was the final number. Um, but yeah, so it was a little bit smaller than last time, but I had, I kind of sent it out later cause I didn't want to send it out right after Christmas. I waited until after the new year and it was the first month of February. So next time, if I yeah. do it again, I will send it out quite a bit earlier. So people have more time to plan for the weekend yeah but, i think for malcolm no, we're giving like what six months no yes <laughs> <laughs> That's Which, awesome. yeah. yeah i can't wait for Kurt. but yeah because it's for malcolm. our birthday it's our birthday yeah yes well not now like at malcolm yeah just so we're not confusing everybody <laughs> um but yeah yeah no it was great um again you know it was, uh we've attended car treat a few times now so it's like a well-oiled machine now um, it was funny cause I was, I was like, Oh, it's nice to see you. She's like, yeah, I missed the last one. Cause I, I had COVID and I was like, Oh, right. That sucks. And then I was like, Oh, and so, and so I was like, well, wasn't he here last year? I was like, no, he had COVID too. There's a few people that attended yeah. this time that they couldn't last time because of yeah. sickness going around. I'm assuming exactly. it was COVID, but maybe, yeah, it was just, <laughs> so I was like, Oh, right. But so yeah, it's just good. And I did, I only attended the one day cause I had been kind of board game heavy cause I had done the weekend before the Acme Legion day and you know, like, and then there's like pack all the games, go to the event, do the full day of gaming, bring everything back. So it's kind of chaotic and intrusive in the household. <laughs> and it was uh, the car and there was something else going on and it was just kind of like, you had a birthday okay. thing and, and you still have right. four kids coming in and out of the house. So. Yeah, I was like, okay, where where is there going to be family time? So I was like, I better not go the full week (laughs) and (laughs) and sleep on the couch when I come back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Perfect. So let's get talking about the games that was played at Car Treat. Um, We're going to be talking about five each. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of went in order of play myself. I no, kind it's of not. It's ranked just all mine. over the place. I kind of ranked okay. mine. But uh Well my actually they're when loosely I'm looking ranked. at it, it kinda is, yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. It's, so then what's your number weird. five? So my number five is an old one that one of our friends, Bernie, was like, Hey, do you guys want to play five tribes at Car Oh Trip? yes. And we're like, Yeah, a bunch of us. When can we do this? Like we thought, oh, we kind of scheduled well, I was teaching most of the weekend. And so was my other, our other friend, Ashley was teaching 
all the weekend pretty much. And mm-hmm. so then we're like, well, we have Saturday night because we left Saturday night open just for kind of like party games or whatever that won't really burn our brain. So he's like, okay, let's play it then. We're like, okay. So we were playing it. And um, so what Five Tribes is, is it's a, a Bruno Cafala game. And this was made in 2014. And it's called Five Tribes Jins of Nakala. I believe that's mm-hmm. how you say it. And it has a, several expansions, but we just play base game. And it's still awesome with the base game. It's a very unique type of game. You have this big board in front of you with... Um, a grid basically of different squares. Um, I think the base game is a five by four, maybe not sure how many, but they all have different um, actions on them. And you start the game with just putting a pile of meeples on each one and they're all different colored and they all have different actions, each color. And so on your turn, well, before you get to your turn, you actually bid for your turn. Mm -hmm. So um, you roll or, you know, randomize who's first bidding and you'll bid, and so there's like a little track. And so you might bid um, five bucks and then the next person might just bid zero. They don't care. In this game, I typically never care to be the first player because it's such a tactical game that as soon as somebody does something, it changes the whole board. So yeah. it's not something you can really plan in the, like do, you know, plan a few turns ahead. But anyway, so you'll bid for your turn. And if you, pay zero you will go in the zero spot and then if the next person bids zero then they'll bump you back so you'll be even further back but then you'll have your turn order and on your turn you are going to grab like all the meeples from one tile and then you are going to in mount mancala fashion you're going to drop one meeple off as you move orthogonally to another tile can't backtrack to that tile i believe maybe you can in the long you can maybe come sure back all the can. way around if you have. No, I can't remember, but I don't think you can. But anyway, so you'll drop a meeple off. And as soon as you get drop off the last meeple, wherever you are, you're going to take that action. Now, if you've dropped off um, a meeple that has other meeples of that color, you get to use all those meeples. And they all kind of have different actions. I won't explain the actions, but they, they're all really cool. And you can... Um, um, with one of them, you can like buy gins, which give you like a player power throughout the game or some end game points. There's um, some that will help you um, get these little cards and they could be um, helper cards or like a set collection of different types of food and things that you will need throughout the game to get these big points for set collection. There's all kind of th- kinds of things that um, each meeple does. And it's really neat because there's so much so many different things you can do that there could be a lot of ap in this game where you know you really want to see oh let me look at all 18 moves i could just do right now but we were all pretty fast players and it was it was fun we (laughs) ashley was very tired she works very early she's a baker so she gets up quite early like three four in the morning so by this time it was i think (laughs) 10 ish she was so tired and i said and like I've just joked. That's like said, a thinky game that way. <laughs> I know. She was just like, what is going on here? And I'm like, I really want you to play this game again when you're sober. <laughs> and I meant sober, sober. like yeah. not a sleepy. Week. We none of us were drinking there. <laughs> but it, it was just funny because I'm like, I know you feel like mentally drunk because you're so tired. But she didn't actually end up liking it at the time. So it was fun. But I love that game so much and it was so good to play it. Um, and that was my number five, five tribes. Nice. Yeah. Now it's such a good game. Um, yeah. Travis was mentioning it cause he had it on his top 100 list, but he says, I didn't like my play of it, but I think I would. So I just need to play it again. And then we talked about, I was like, Oh, I did play it again. He's like, I didn't like it. I was like, really? He's like, but it was late. I want to play it again in the afternoon. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, five tribes is just so good. Yeah. All right, my number five is Seas of Strife. And Bernie brought this game, and it was like a little card game that I had never heard of before. And it's a, like, it was really interesting because it's like a, um, what's the word? Trick-taking. Trick-taking game. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is the word. Chase, that was gone. Okay, but it's a trick-taking game. But what's really interesting is, like, you have the different, suits right 
and then different suits count more than others. So if I play like, I don't know if it was color, if I play a blue suit, then it counts less than if it's a green suit or something. And there's all like numbers assigned to them. So you can tell it's whatever is the highest number will be more than others. And if you win the trick, then that's kind of negative points. You don't want to win the trick ideally, but if you play the highest numbered of a trick, so whoever starts, you got to play that suit if you can, but you're trying to play lower if you can. Now each suits has a card, like I think it's the highest card of that suit, that makes it that that suit doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Cancels so if you're mm -hmm. able to play that, then it that suit can't win, and it'll go to the other suit that's the highest numbered. And like, so you never know as you play, are you going to be like, are you playing the suit that's going to win? Are you playing the suit that's not going to win? And be like, oh darn. I'm highest and I'm about to win, but then they play the highest, which makes this suit doesn't count. So then it goes to the other suit and then like things changes quick, just in the one round. It was so neat. And then we played with um, uh, Shane from left. <laughs> I think that was like the one game where he picked up like five suits in a row and it just happened that it kept going back to him. And it's kind of like, well, geez. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> but this was a really interesting game. I quite enjoyed it. Have you yeah, did you play it, Carla? I, I did. Jackie, Shane's wife, actually, she yeah. taught me and Cherry and we played a couple play a couple games of it. And it was it's so backwards thinking for yeah. most trick taking because you don't want it, but then you also are like, well, if I cancel it out, but then I think if somebody else plays a white, then you still get it or something. Like, well, because the if they're even, it's still like, the highest that, or something. Then right? it still goes yeah. to the highest. So it'd be like, yeah. okay, this isn't it. But then, oh, but then this one isn't it either. And then it's like, oh no, we're even. So then that means this. It's all the yeah. same suit again. And yeah, like it's it's tr like not true. Well, tricky. It's a trick taking. Yeah, game. it's like, tricky. It's tricky in that way. <laughs> but it. It was very mm. interesting. Yeah, it is. It's neat. Mm. I'm glad he brought it. We yeah. we kept bugging him because we were. I had taught him at a game it, of Stroganoff. Him and Shane and a couple other guys were playing, um, and so I was teaching. And then I said to Jackie, "I can play something because I've taught them, and uh, like I have some time." So she's grabbed. We grabbed Cherry, and she taught us. But we kept kind of running over to Bernie. We were like, "Okay, what about what happens in this situation?" He's like, "It's still <laughs> the highest one now because you're all tied or whatever." I'm like, "Oh, okay. yeah." So it was good we had him there. But yeah, it's neat. Very cool. Game. Yeah. Awesome. So that was your number five. My number My four. Number five. Um, was Age of Innovation made in 2023 nice. by Helge Oster Ostertus. I'll start off, I'm not sure how to say it, but <laughs> now this one, I had, <laughs> how would you say it? Osterfoss? I've no idea. It's like German. I don't know. <laughs> you would think I could get the hang of that since I am German, but I've never learned the language. You're not German enough. <laughs> no, my dad actually was born speaking, my parents were born speaking German, but they yeah. quickly, they lived here. They were born here in Saskatchewan, like in, Albert, uh, in Canada, but, and were quickly taught out of talking German. So right. we never learned it. But uh, anyway, so this is a um, a successor to uh, Terra Mystica. Now, yes. I had played that way, way back Terra Mystica when I first got into the hobby and it kind of scared me a little bit. I wasn't, you know, I didn't like the whole, a bit of area control and all that. So I never kind of went back to it. But recently, um, our friend Cherry had got Terra Nova, which is kind of the baby Terra Mystica. And yeah. so I'm like, oh, I want to try it. So I had actually learned it for her to come and play um, one night. Oh, we had a game day here and, and we played with a bunch of people and uh, I really liked it. And then I kind of heard about this one and I liked the theme, how it's um, not so like totally fantasy or whatever, but it has more of a, uh, a modern twist to it there's still lots of fantasy in it but um so i thought well i'm gonna give this one a try and when we were actually at um calgary tabletop day they had it for sale there and you couldn't get it anywhere yet so i'm like 
and it was a decent price. So I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna get. This. Oh, I didn't realize you had bought it that weekend. Yeah, I know you played and it that weekend. But, I played oh, it well, cool. and the nice thing was that when I was thinking about buying it, um, like uh, now I, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Our friend oh, is it he, JT or no? Um, he designed Dice Thrones. Dice oh, Thrones, Dice Keith. Thrones Dice, yeah, Dice Born Heroes. Keith, yes. Oh, yeah. I can't believe I blanked on Keith. Um, he's <laughs> like, oh, I could totally teach that. And I'm like, yeah. So bought it, um, punched it that night. And the next morning he taught us all. And he's, he's a fabulous teacher. And so mm-hmm. we played it and it was so fun. I loved it. And um, played it one more time, I think, with like my game group here. And then hadn't got it back to the table because it is quite a – like a big thinky heavy game that I wouldn't introduce John to. I don't think he might uh, run away. I won't do that to him. On the table. (laughs) What is this? What are you doing to me? But uh, so I'm like, well, I'll offer to teach it at car treat. And it was, um, it filled up quite fast actually. Mm. But then um, somebody didn't make it or I can't remember what happened. So there was just three of us, but we ended up playing it. Um, One of them was my friend, Corey. He from Edmonton, he had came, he missed the last one. He was another one that missed the last one because of COVID. So he got to come to this one. Yeah. There was a few actually, now that I think about it, that actually were sick. Yeah. Anyway, so we got to play this, but it's, it adds to Terra Mystica where, you know, you are um, terraforming the tiles and whatnot to build houses um, trading, and I don't think they're even called houses. They're called like trading posts, or um, I can't remember what the the basic ones are. But then you can go into the higher up ones, and they they kind of veer off. So you can go to the top left ones, or you can go to these schools on the right. And so oh, these cool. are different from Terra Mystica. And then from the schools, you can go to uni- university, and from the the left side, you can go to a castle. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. And so those are the big ones. And it's not like you, um, like a a 4X where you destroy somebody or you kick somebody off. The only kind of thing that could ever happen is if somebody terraformed a tile, hadn't built on it, you could go and re-terraform it to something else. That's really the only take that in the game because there's a lot of positive player interaction because you do kind of want to build next to people because when you um, when they would build or upgrade, then they give you power. Now the power does cost you points if it's like high power, but it's still worth it a lot of times because the power is that little um, uh, not wheel, but kind of a a rondelle like little. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't even know how to describe yeah, it's, it. It's an interesting you, mechanism. Yeah, right? where you move these little power discs around into these three sections and they start in this spot where they're nothing and you move them up to this next section where they're kind of preparing to be you know worth something and then once you move them into the next section then they're worth like basically um, currency but Mm. in order to move them you always have to move from your bottom one first anytime you get like a power upage or whatever then you can move from once you're all full into your second then you can move them to your third and then they can be spent so it's really a puzzle of when do I spend or do I wait till I get that full because if I if I spend right away and then I get more power well now I got to move the bottom ones again back in and it's just a a real cool system but this one kind of adds knowledge of um, books and so it's a whole other track um, not a track, a whole other board where you can purchase with these books different knowledge tiles that will give you um, on ga- on game bonuses, um, income, and all kinds of things. There's some neutral buildings in this one that you can acquire, and those oh, cool. will help you with building your cities and whatnot. And it's it's really neat. And the, the neat thing is the factions you can um, you draft at the beginning, so you mix a faction with um, a starting tile also with what is it another ability so they all kind of mix and match it's not like you're just yeah it's like very high um like replayability in this one so in your opinion then it's worth owning both terra mystica and age of innovation if you are if you are in love with it i would definitely because it's it's just it's such a it's, it's so neat. And I did still go back and play Terra Mystica on um, Board Game Arena just to kind of compare. And it it still feels different okay, because yeah, it yeah. has um, 
like there's a lot of similarity. Like I would almost call it like a 2.0 of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you're definitely, if you're a big fan of it, I would definitely get this one as well. But Man. it's neat. You'll have to quit sometime <laughs> with us. And that was my number four, Age of Innovation. How did Keith do? Because I played Gaia Project with him and he lapped me by 100 points. <laughs> well, I actually beat him in that game. And oh, it was wow, funny good for you. Because just barely, I think. And then we went and played Earth. And then I, I think I might have beat him by a point in Age of Innovation or something. But then we played Earth and we ended the game and I tallied it all up. And I'm like, oh, we tied. And he's like, here, let me look at that again. He's like, he re-added. He's like, you actually won by one. <laughs> so I think it was both games. Like that we, I literally just beat him by one. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> but it was definitely Earth. But no, I, he was a very nice. good teacher, though. He helped yeah, us yeah. a lot. Like. You know how some teachers, they basically will guide you along the way. And he did that very much. So, Oh, was, yeah. No, actually. It wasn't right. all me. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So that was your number four. Yeah. My number four is Diced Veggies. So I watched it played because I got there. They were in the middle of playing it. So I just sat down and watched it played. And then Shane and Jackie were playing it. And then Shane was like, okay, well, I'm going to um, Wizard's Loft to buy it. And I'm like, if there's an extra copy, <laughs> grab one for me. And I guess they grabbed the last two copies. Oh, perfect. So I ended up getting diced veggies that weekend as well. But then we played it later that day. And that is just a cute, yeah, simple cute. game. Um, I had the chance to play it with Lily after I got back on the Sunday. And then she enjoyed it as well. But it's kind of neat because you have all these different dice of different colors. And those are your ingredients. Right. So the orange is a carrots. The the red is like the red onions or like it's like a purple is the red onions. And then you have like the beige, that's the mushrooms and so on. And then you shake them in this little holder thing and you create this like little cluster of dice. And then you have this cardboard cleaver to chop <laughs> away the vegetables that you need. So the whole thematic appeal to it is amazing. But when you chop away some vegetables, you got to chop away at the most 10 pips worth of veggies, right? So like, okay, and then you all have recipe cards. It's like, okay, well, I'm making, um, I don't know, minestrone soup here. So I need tomatoes and carrots and like you have the thing and then you're looking at what you need it's like great well there's tomatoes here but the carrots are on the opposite side so i can't get all the vegetable at the one time and the tomatoes a six die like is on the six side so that's taking a lot of out of the 10 so and it is just interesting what to decide what you're going to chop away and then if you ever get to the point where you're down to where one veggie is no longer represented all the veggies that's been spent for recipes get all add together and then you like roll everything and then kind of recreate your ingredient cluster thing right but it's very very simple game it's like you know like you chop away break away the dice to put that in your pile and then you're going to be spending them to do your recipes and then you have like different recipe kind of modifiers that will give you extra points that'll give you like a certain thing you need to do is like, well, if uh, all your dice are even numbers and you can add this and it's like, a, it's not just minestrone soup. It's like a family secret recipe minestrone soup or stuff like that. So it's just, it was cute. Like, and yeah, the fact that we're like a few of us like, okay, that day, let's go buy it. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was neat. And then I got to play it a couple more times. So, quite enjoy that one so that was my number four diced veggies yeah it's definitely a cute one i got to play it there too um jackie taught us that one as well it's just Mm. got the the toy factor and it is so cool because yeah i mean just the slicing the dice is just so satisfying (laughs) (laughs) that little cleaver (laughs) yeah and the cards actually make it like a little bit tricky because some of them those i don't know if they're power cards or something that will up your points yeah they're not easy because you need to like spend all sixes or you need to use all your dice this time or like certain things that are not easy to accomplish. 
I think I played the game twice. And one time, I don't think I got one of those power cards completed. <laughs> I just kind of raced through getting the base ones because I'm like, I'm not going to get these. So I need to like finish this fast <laughs> before they <laughs> get Because everyone many, else yeah. is going to get those big ones. But yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Well, my number three was Four Shuffle, made in 2023 by Kosh. And this one I had um, gotten weeks before and just loved it. I had been playing it on BGA for months and couldn't wait for this game. It finally arrived in Canada and I got um, a copy at our local game store, Wizards Loft. And it is so fun. So I I was telling Shane about it, our, our friend from Leftbridge, and he's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm interested in that one. So I said, well, okay, well, if we have time on Sunday or whatever, I can teach you this game. So it was me and him, and I can't remember who else played. There was two other people playing, but there was four of us playing. And so it is a bit different in a four-player game, whereas you're going to get less cards because you – in a two-player game, you'll take out 30 cards from the deck, but it is a huge deck. It's like – I'm. I'm going to say almost like 200 cards. So you still would get, you know, taking out 30, you're still going to get like, you know, 70 cards each possibly before the game ends where you're go through anyway, not you won't have them all, but, and where it was with four people, it is, uh, I think you take out only like 20, but then it's divided by four people, right? So there's way less cards. So the points are going to be scored quite lower but what you are doing is you are um, building up a forest and you are um, place planting trees basically in the forest and then you're placing animals all around the tree so you're going to place cards that will tuck on to the right of the tree to the left on the tree underneath the tree and on the top of the tree and it's not just animals there's also mushrooms and shrubs and things and they score points in all different kind of combo tastic ways. And it's it's so cool because there's so many different strategies in this game you can go for. You can go for like just a big tree strategy where you have a whole bunch of trees and you like and each tree scores differently. Some are like set collections, some are depending on what you have around the tree. Some just want a whole bunch of that same tree, and it's a bunch of different things. Um, you can do like a uh, butterfly strategy where on the top you can tuck all different types of butterflies and that'll give you a whole bunch of big points i mean and you don't just do one kind of strategy you kind of have like a few going but it's like how far do i go with one and then with another like because how you play your cards is you'll put a tree if you say you play a tree first um, there's a cost in the top right and however many cards it shows you have to pay that and you pay those cards into the clearing so that's like this in front of you there's a board that you'll that holds 10 cards and you'll play them there and then those are up for grabs from anybody else so if um, I also if I play a card at the bottom that matches this color you get a bonus so if this tree wanted me to play these yellow type of cards and I paid with these yellow type of cards, I'd also get this bonus at the bottom. Now, um, the thing with putting them in the clearing is once it gets to 10 cards, those cards will clear and go to discard and they're gone forever. Now, there's some cards that will let you take all those cards and put them into your cave and then they're just worth a point each. So sometimes you can see people are waiting for that clearing to build up to play their bear so that they can take all those cards. But it's funny sometimes when you'll clear it because, okay, I'm going to buy a tree, but I have to pay three cards. Oh, there's more than 10. Those are going to clear. And then you can see people's faces like, oh, they're just waiting for all those cards to build up. But Shane ended up killing us in this game. He <laughs> did the tree strategy and he had, I can't even remember how many points he had with his, just his trees alone, but, I don't even know what strategy I went with that game, but it was funny because, oh, Cherry was one of them that was we were playing with because he was adding up the points and he's like, did you think you did bad? And she's like, yeah, I think I did really bad. And he's like, oh, okay, because I was going to re-add it. <laughs> 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 and that's not like Cherry. She's usually like, you know, very, very strategic, but it was Sunday. We were all getting tired and, uh, <laughs> but obviously not Shane who learned it for the first time and just destroyed us. But it was so fun. I love that game. And that's my number three for a shuffle. You would love this game too, I think. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to try that sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was like, it used up a lot of the table. Oh, it's a table. I, yeah. 
Like even with two players, I mean, you need a big table and you use the whole table. And then I thought, (laughs) how is this ever going to work with four? But it does make sense because then the cards are divided amongst you. So you don't have like when me and John play, we use our whole kitchen table. He (laughs) uses half and I use half. He loves this game too. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, my number three, that actually was funny. Carl, who was attending car treat. Yeah. Um, came up we had like time in between uh, just a little bit of time and he's like well let's play a quick card game and he grabbed just a deck of cards and i was like have you guys ever played this game called cucumbers and i was like i've tried to learn that game you got to describe it i've tried to play it on bga and i did i thought it was like five cucumbers (laughs) well it was exactly slightly played it was That's five cucumbers. Different. So in five cucumbers, and I talk about five cucumbers a lot because I love it. And it's a Friedman freeze game. And what mm-hmm. he's done is each card has a certain number of cucumbers on it. And you play seven rounds, trick taking game. The last trick wins, but you don't want to win the trick. So you're trying to, I guess, shed, shed card shedding. That is it. Mm-hmm. If you don't want yeah. the trick, but, um, and then, like, in the five cucumbers, it's however many images of the cucumbers on there, that's what you get, right? Yeah, in so. the cucumber with just a regular deck of cards is the same thing. So you have your cards, you're playing, matching or higher. And if you can't go matching or higher, you have to play your lowest card. But then the last round is the only one that counts, and you're trying not to win this one. So you're trying to keep a low card in this last round and then when uh whoever wins it then how whatever card they played with they had to tally up that number so instead of collecting cucumbers you add the number and still kind of um elimination like you we played to a certain uh, number and then if you reach that number you got eliminated um but so instead of having cucumber bits with the cucumber images on the card you just tallied up the whole number that was on the card oh, okay. um, but i was like that's what i, was I like, think it's five cucumbers yeah and, that's what I, and, I thought it was gonna be yeah and it was it was just interesting to see five cucumbers in its original form right with as a re, like just a regular deck of card and i was telling him about five cucumbers and the cucumber bits and he's like oh i need to find that one like, <laughs> honestly f- like it's great that you can play with a regular deck of card. That's amazing. I love my five cucumbers. Oh, yeah. So with the cute. little, the little cucumber cucumbers bits and stuff, adorable. I'm not giving that up. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, so that was so cool. Cause yeah, he was like, oh, let's play this card game called Cucumbers. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I know what this is. <laughs> so, and, and it was. And then, you know, like Friedman Fries did say that it was based off of oh, okay. a German card game oh, okay. that was, you know, commonly played. So, yeah. and I was yeah, just going to say, I wonder which came first, but okay. that makes Oh yeah, sense. no, definitely the card game version. And they just yeah. made like a specific card game version um, yeah. with the that's cucumber bits and stuff. So, yeah. So that's my number three, five cucumbers or cucumbers with a regular deck of card. Yeah. Well, I'll have to try it again on there. Cause I, I couldn't figure out, well, how are they deciding what, like there's no cucumbers on there. So how are they deciding who's, you know, how many points you're losing or whatever, but I couldn't, couldn't figure mm-hmm. it out. But now that makes sense. All right. Well, my number two is the search for lost species made in 2023 by Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett. Now this one was fun because I played with my friend Corey again and Annette, who is a friend of ours. I think you know Steve. Did you do you know Possibly. Steve or B- from Edmonton? So he um we met him at um KefCon, I think it was, and he is a phenomenal teacher. He teaches games so well. And um so he came to the last one and he taught games there and then he came again this time and at the just before Carter, he's like, Oh, my wife can actually make it. Is there room for her? I'm like, Oh, of course. So nice. she came yeah. and she's just a delight. We had, I had so much fun playing with her, but she ended up playing this with me and Corey. And this is the successor to a search for planet X, which I love as well. But this one, you are searching for a lost species and you're actually searching for a real lost species in the real world. There are eight that you could choose from. And these are actual lost species that are still lost, except for one has been found since the game has been made, which is ironic. Oh, that's cool. But um, And by lost, I mean, 
maybe 80 years ago, like these are tracked animals that they have not been able to find since kind of thing. So that's how. So like presume extinct. That's exactly what we right. think. They haven't found them since, but one of them is found. I don't know which one it was. I just heard on some content creator talking about one of them has been found, but they didn't know either, which nice. is kind of neat. But um, so you choose one of these animals and then um, you are trying to figure out on this map where that lost species is. Now it's a hexagonal map and on each spot, there's going to be other animals that you have different rules for and or it could be an empty space now it could just appear empty and that would be could be where the lost species is and there's only ever one thing in each so it's either an animal that you already know exists and has you have certain rules for it's the lost species or it appears or it's an empty space so you were just kind of traveling around these this map, um, trying to get clues about. Well, you played this, um, trying to get yep. clues about what, you know, you might be able to like search in like three or four hexes, and you say, "Like I'm searching for couscous," and so the information it'll tell you is there are either none there, which is good information because you can cross those off, or there are two in that area, and so you're like, "Okay, out of these four tiles, I know two of them are here." And there's only a certain amount of each of the animals that are still like found. And so some of them, like the birds, I forget what the name of them are, but they are always in this pattern, like a diamond pattern. So if you find two of them, you almost know where the other ones are. And so it's a lot of deduction. And then um, as you move around this um, hiker, once you pass this main hiker um, and he'll move to another spot, then you get to put down tokens where you are making a guess of what something is. And it's neat how it works because on the first time you can choose zero, one or two, and you can place them down face down and then you'll put the number on them. Say it was the first one. And then further down um, the line, you'll come to that number again and you will check those. So if we check them and say, I thought there was a bird there and you thought there was a couscous, but you were right then you will get to circle that at the bottom and get an extra point at the end of the game. If I was right as well, I would too. But if I was wrong, I lose that token. I don't ever get to place that one again. And I lose time. Now, time is how you move around the map. And that's how you pay basically currency for your actions. So the better actions cost more time. So losing time is not good in this game because then mm. it takes longer for you to do things. But um we ended up, I believe, Annette won. She found the species and then me and Corey searched for it right after, which is nice because you still get a chance to do that. And you don't always just win by finding it. It's There's different point, points for um, finding other species as well. But um, we both searched for it. And I think we both had one thing wrong because in order to search for it, you have to know exactly what is in two adjacent spots of it. Mm -hmm. So you may very well know where it is, but if you don't know what's beside it, then you you won't get a an answer it's like a positive enough, answer. Yeah. But um, she loved it. She's played Search for Planet X, and the funny thing was at the beginning of the game, she like when we could put down tokens, she was putting down tokens. And I'm like, you haven't even searched there. She's like, I'm just gonna guess. And like, I think two out of the three, she was right or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, she just took a wild guess on one or two of them, but it was funny. Nice. But that, uh, she did end up winning because finding the species gives you like 10 points right off or 12 or something. And we did not. So we would have had to catch up with finding our other ones, but yeah, she ended up getting that one, but it was super fun. I love that game. And that was the search for the lost species. Yeah, that's an interesting one for sure. Mm -hmm. And that was your number two. So yep. my number two, I had played before at Falcon. And I played a Japanese version called Nana. And then at Cartreet, we played the newer Amer North American reprint called Trio. And this one is very interesting. So everybody gets cards and you sort them by number from lowest to highest. And then, so we all have cards in our hand. And there's also like eight cards that are face down in the middle. And we're going to be asking, and you can ask two questions, either so-and-so players show me your highest card or your lowest card. 
So it's one or the other. And then they'll put it down in front of them. Everybody sees. Now you also have the option of flipping a card that is face down and flip that up. And what you're trying to do, you're trying to create a set of three. Now, if I say, okay, well, show me your highest card. And he flips over his highest card and it's a 10. Okay. And I'll be like, okay, well, how about you? You show me your highest card. And he flips his card over and it's also a 10. Then I can keep going and be like, well, I know I have a 10 and it's my highest card. So Melanie, show me your highest card. And I flip it. It's a 10 (laughs) and I get all three of those and yay. And then you want to get either three sets of threes to win. Or if you get two cards where added together or subtracted to each other equals seven, then you would win with two sets. Or if you're able to get a set of three, seven, you would automatically win the game. But it's really hard to get a set of seven because They're that is going to be right smack in the middle. Yeah. And you can't ask, can you show me your middle card? It has to be highest yeah. to lowest. So you got to get rid of those cards before those three, uh, sevens are available. But there's so there's like a memory aspect to it as to what got flipped or what got revealed where, and you got to try to remember is that oh come on we we saw we saw the one before like who had the one and you know what is it okay it was on the table but where was it on the table like so you try and my memory sucks oh me too but <laughs> terrible but I love this game but I'm terrible it is good. <laughs> Yeah, Mostly, I, this, I can remember the ones in people's hands sometimes, but the flipped yeah. ones, as soon as oh. it flips back, I'm like, what was that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like in and out, instant out. But um, yeah, no, this is one that, and we, when we played it and we finished at first, I was like, okay, again. And they're like, okay, again. And we ended up playing four times in a row. And then we're like, yeah. okay, well, we got to go and do the next game because I was set scheduled. But so it's one of those that is like so quick and fast but satisfying that you're like okay one more time so it's definitely on my wish list because it's not currently available right now Mm -hmm. yeah well i saw that was it on amazon for like i can't remember it was like 50 or 80 bucks for a little card game i was like okay i mean i want it but i don't want it that bad no (laughs) it'll it'll come back in stock and i got it off list so i'm sure it'll be there soon yeah, I'm so sure keeping an eye out, it. but that one that one is worth picking up if you ever come across it. It's just a great filler game. Well, and um, anybody and can play two. it. Yeah, anyone oh, yeah. can play this game. And it's even us describing it probably doesn't sound very fun because I remember people describing it to me. I even watched like a video on it. Like I'm like, How, this doesn't look fun. Like it's just, you know, flipping cards. But when you play it, everybody it's, it's that I played fine, with yeah. like, I, and I always say, okay, like, this is how it's played. And they kind of look at me like, really? And then like, well, let's just play it. And then they're like, okay, again, because yeah. you just want to <laughs> do better. And it's, it's just an addicting game. That's for sure. But yeah. And one. Nana plays exactly the same. That was my number six, same. actually. Oh, was it? Nice. Yeah. Nana plays exactly yeah. the same. It's a Japanese version. It's not as bright and colorful as Trio. Yeah. Definitely artwork wise. I personally would prefer Trio, I think. But either yeah. one are exactly the same game. There's also a so. Christmas Nana version, which oh, I don't yes. know if you can get that one either. But I seen. I that think on. um a friend Michael had it. Oh really? Yeah, I yeah. just seen it on Foster the Meeple. I think it was, or maybe it was Board Game Garden. One of those two nice. content creators had it, and they hadn't played it, but they had showed it and said, "Oh, I have this copy of it." And I'm like, "Oh, that's really cute." Very but, nice. No, I'm happy with the art in this one. It's got that Mexican um, yeah. fiesta vibe or like. Yeah, the, definitely. It's kind of skull, what it's. Kind of the skulls and stuff, but yeah, it's neat. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. Well, my number one is Kutnahora City of Silver made in 2023. And this was by Andreas Bystron, Peter Koslova, and Pave Jarosh. Nice. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the the uh, title alone, not even like the designers, the title alone is a mouthful. Yeah, it is. And I, I think <laughs> it's saying Kutnahora. Maybe it's Kutnahora. I don't know. I feel like Kutnahora sounds better. But anyway, this is um, <laughs> made from a, uh, or it's, it's made about a city, um, like a village that was in, um, oh, now I'm forgetting if it was 
where exactly it was, but it was actually this quiet little village that they discovered they, they had silver in the mines or whatever, and they just like prospered and it became very famous. And they built like a cathedral and everything there. It's got a little history in the, in the, the game box, which is really neat. Oh, neat. But yeah. <clears throat> it's a really cool, interesting game. It's, it's like an economic type Euro where you are um, building up, uh, building, what are you building? Not, not a city because you're, well, you're building a city altogether, but you are building buildings and you are mining for the silver. And there's, um, it's cool how you have your actions because you all have a hand of cards. And so you take two actions, your first turn, two actions, your second turn, and then one, and then that is the round. And with the cards, they are double sided. So they have a different action on each side. And so you will choose one of the cards to play but then that card can't be played for that whole round. So you have to be careful if like, okay, I want to build this round, but then I only have one other card that has a build on it. If I want to build twice, I can't use that other action on that other card. So I have to save that. So you do have to do a bit of planning, but the actions are you have to um, get the rights to a building first. So you go to get the building and you pay a a little amount and you will take that building and you'll kind of put it on the top of your player board. Um, And then you can build it, but it costs. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Then first you need a plot. So you need the rights and the plot. So you can do either one first. And so then you look into the city and you choose a spot for a plot and you pay the wood for it. And then, then you can build. Now, to do these things, most of the cost of things is wood. And now you have these little cardboard computers, they're called, that have these little slidey things on them. And every time you build or mine or do different things, um, it the card will tell you, like, wherever you're building or whatever, it'll say to, like, move these computer things. So it might tell you to, like, move the... Um, or up too. So you have to take these cards out of this computer and slide them to the back. And now that may have increased or decreased the value of ore. Um, and then sometimes you will have to increase population. And it's very thematic because as you're building, you're increasing the population in your city. So you increase it. Oh no, wood has gone up in price. Everything costs more now. And so it's it's neat how everything affects a lot of other things. And it's cool because each player can only build a three type of buildings and they're all different and they give you a grid of how you would set up for a two player, three player, four player. So it's all like even. So I might be able to build um, ore buildings, beer buildings, and maybe contract buildings. Whereas if we were in a two player game, you would be able to build two different ones plus one that I can. And so it's, it's not like you, you have to be careful of if we can build the same thing, it's not always beneficial for us to both build it because then the price of it goes down. So if we're building or buildings and the price will go down, well, then when we go to take income, instead of getting $5 for each or that we've like um, built up, we're only getting two. That's a big difference. <laughs> so you have to really be careful of how you build things, when you build things. Another action is to build on the cathedral, which will give you things. Um, there's always a tax. Lots of things will raise the taxes. And if you don't pay tax at the end of the round, you lose reputation. And so there's a reputation track that uh, can be really good if you can move up in it and really bad if you move down. It um, As you build your buildings, you pull these houses off your player mat and they will give you different bonuses as well. There's um, a whole different type of uh, multiplier scoring that you can um, pay to get or you can get if you build these public buildings. So building a public building is very expensive, but if you have it next to you, it can benefit you as well. It will also benefit other people next to it. So it's interesting how you build on this map because once you build somewhere, you always have to build next to some to yourself or somebody else, and then it gets more expensive. So you're trying to kind of start on the edge, and then you slowly will come together, or you might automatically build next to someone, because each year building has these little um, colored circles on the top. And every color that they are next to that matches will give you a point. So sometimes somebody has a building, they're like, oh, I'm going to build right next to her because I have these two little orange and she has like 
two orange. So I'm going to get four points right away because I have two times two. Um, there's some on the edge of the map and stuff. It's it's just such a neat game. It's um, We played it with four players. It's quite a long game, but um, I can't remember why it took so long. I think it was there's was some AP going on in the game <laughs> with a uh, couple of players, but it was it's such a cool game and uh, I love it. It's like a I don't usually love like these. It's I wouldn't say it's like all economic because there's still like a euroy part of it that I love where you know you have to um, get this to get that to get this kind of thing, but there is quite a bit of um, you have to like plan for your income to get the money to sell and all of these kinds of things. And it's, it's so interesting. I probably didn't describe it the best, but it's if, if you're interested at anything, or if you've heard anything about this game, have a look at a playthrough, have a look at a, a learn to, um, I think, uh, what's his name? Not, not Slava. Is it the guy with the, Oh, what does I'm gonna have to put it in the comments under when I pick <laughs> this game. He describes this game perfect. He's nice. like a, has a, a Russian accent, but I can't think of his his name now. I'm sure you've watched some playthroughs or learned to plays from him, but he teaches games very well. But yeah, that's my number one, Kutnahora City of Silver. Yeah, sounds involved. <laughs> it is, but it's still very. It flows very well once you, nice. you learn it. It's not. It's really not a big learn. It's just uh, um, once you, you figure out how it all kind of works with building and not building too many of the same building and stuff, then it yeah, it, it cool. feels really well. And that was your number one. Yes. My number one, we ended up playing because I messed up. Um, now, the night before <laughs> Car Treat, I was like, okay, so I'm bringing this for Carla. I'm bringing this for Greg. And, like, is there anything else I'm supposed to yeah. bring? And you even and asked nobody me. commented anything. Yeah. And I was like, okay, good, perfect. I'm good. <laughs> and I was supposed to bring heat because somebody was Carl teaching was gonna heat teach and it. I was playing it. <laughs> and we're all sitting at the table waiting for heat. And I'm like, okay. And then Carla's like, yeah, Melanie brought it. And I was like, oh, my God, I did it. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. And I was like, I think I'm forgetting something. Yeah, I am. So, kibosh no big heat. deal. You got to play I think everybody game. that was sitting down to play it had played it before. Oh, that's so good. nobody was yeah. really heartbroken. Oh, yeah. So it says, well, and then I think it was Shane. He's like, well, I brought Apiary. We could play that one. I'm like, I, I really want yes! to play that one too. <laughs> and it was really interesting. So it's like yeah. space bees. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. And the first time I saw the game set up, and I was like, oh, that's cute. Is that a little pig? No, it's a bee. <laughs> In a spacesuit or something. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it was a very interesting game. Like, because there was a lot of different elements going on. Um, and you have, like, the top section where you're going to go and move this main thing around. And where it lands, you get to kind of collect that. And you're collecting the resources to spend it to do these different actions or go into these different places. And you could go and create the dance, the waggle dance that the bees will do. Like it was thematic. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, the components were really cool. Like they were really cool. And then your bees like has four sides. So you can like start with a one level B and the lower valued B, like the, the weaker it is on the board. But when you bring everything back, cause it's like a worker placement. And when you bring them back, then they upgrade to a level two. If you wish, but that's then cool. they're the more powerful, right? So then that's great. And then when they reach a level four, they kind of die off. Like they, you can't keep them at a level four. They're going to die off and you got to go and hatch them again or whatever it is. Right. So it was kind of really interesting mitigating that. And then a lot of the areas as well. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to go into this area and I put my bee there to activate this area. So it bumps the bee that was there further to the next level spot. And the one that was in the next level spot then goes back to the worker uh, or the player. And then you get to kind of tally up the score of the bees, but you get to count your bee that you just placed in the previous bees to see what the value is. And then based on that value, what portion of the um, action you're activating you can do 
Um, it was it was clever, like it was a cleverly designed game. Definitely one that's on my wish list now. I do wanna, I do wanna get this eventually. Um, it, I mean, setup was kind of involved because you had a lot of different components to put out and stuff. But um, I'm not sorry we didn't play Heat. <laughs> so <laughs> it was neat to learn this one. Yeah, no, that's and, awesome. Everybody loved yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, definitely, and it's kind of definitely one that. I, I want to get and play again I've, eventually. I've only heard good things about this game. I don't think mm-hmm. I've heard one bad thing. And this is the same designer who who um, reimagined Wormspan. Oh, same, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I worked well, with a... Elizabeth Hardy, right. but but she is the the main designer of it. So it, it's very nice. cool because yeah. I love Wormspan, and so this I'm sure I'm gonna like this one. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so that was my number one apiary Stonemeyer game, and you know Stonemeyer game is going to be great components. So, yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, so now we're going to talk about games we bought. I just realized I did buy some games there. <laughs> <gasps> nice, <laughs> but they weren't one of them. Well, two of them. I'll, I'll explain when I talk about mine. But you tell me about your buys. Yeah, because it was insane. Like we've done this stupid deal, me and you. <laughs> that we won't buy unless we've got three games off a shelf of shame. So it's really limiting buying games. But these, mo- <laughs> like I purchased a bunch of games like on Christmas sales and stuff. So a lot of the games I ended up picking up at Car Treat were games that I had purchased a month or two before and just hadn't had the chance to get to it. A few from our friend John, uh, some from like one from Bernie, one from, can't remember, Kayla that had given it to you and then I still need like there was like I got there there was like a box full I'm like oh my god so there was a lot of games now one of them I bought from one of the sales after like after Christmas New Year sales and that was after us (coughs) now we played that one at the ELO game set up at um, the Tabletop YYC hosted event in Calgary in November, the Calgary Game Day. Um, And it was so interesting. It's a deck building game. And what's kind of neat about it is as you get, you you know, like your deck building game, you have your game, your cards in your game, and they're going to be playing those cards. But it's not just, okay, well, I'm going to play these cards. You've got to place them in order because each card will have like a black frame. Some are completed black frame, some are like a half black frame and you put the cards so that they're in order and any black frames that you complete with either on their own card or putting two cards together so that it'll complete the black frame. If it lines up properly, you get to do what's in that frame. Some of them will give you resources. Some of them will give you an ability to do a special action. Some will allow you to do some conversion and all of that sort of stuff. So you're kind of looking at your cards and you're like, Okay, but maybe if I slide this one, then I can activate these two black. But I no longer get this one because now this one, unless I move this over. So it's, it is an interesting concept. Like it's not just, okay, well, this card activates this action. This card activates this action. It depends on how you put it together. I really enjoyed it. It is very simple. Honestly, I would say this is very easy to get somebody to get playing it. It was super fast to teach. And then once you've activated all that, you've collected your resources, you're kind of converted what you wanted to, you go into like the buying phase and you have a token that you're going to decide what you want to do. Now that token is going to give you a special ability you can do, but it also dictates which type of card you can purchase from. And if you're going to buy a level one card or a level two card, level one cards are not as powerful as the level two cards. The level two cards are more expensive. So you would have had to collect more resources in order to be able to activate that one. And it's all monkey things. Like each card has a different type of monkey on it. Your base card has a fifth type of monkey. Like, I don't know where the, the monkeys are coming. Why monkeys? But the artwork is really cute. Like, it's really neat. Um, and then be like, okay, well, I want to do that action, but I kind of was really hoping to get this kind of card because each card kind of has a thing that it concentrates on the most. And the level two cards have more squares on the card. So it's more likely that you're going to create these black blocks that you can activate. So 
It was cool. It was so cool. Plus, they were giving out promotion because you have like your player board that keeps track of it. And they like with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then they had like a promotion one that you could get instead. And it's all board games, like little board games that has that number in it, like seven wonders for number seven. And I'm assuming, like, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it was all of that. Like, it was so, so cool. Um, and I, yeah, quite enjoyed it. So now I have my own copy. Yay, me. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. I played it there and I wasn't sure about it and then tried it on BGA and um, I don't know, I was doing something wrong. But now Kayla tried to teach us on BGA uh, two days ago and I got through half a game and then we were going to try and record, but my stupid computer wasn't updating. <laughs> to the rest of it. So I only got to play half the game, but, but I do want to, I want to play full game of this, mm. but yeah, I want to no, play in person. Like on the table, it seems oh, like I think so. a lot more fun on the table. <laughs> I think every game's a lot more fun yeah, on the table. They are. <laughs> they are. Yeah. So that That's was the first game I pricked up there. All right. Um, are we going to go back and forth on? Yeah, might as games? well. Okay. So one I got, um, I had purchased uh, before that, but I got a friend to bring, and I was actually going to borrow your copy of it. But you did lend right. me the expansion, and this was near and far. Now, I'm so into these campaign games lately and the, the storytelling games that this was just right up my alley. I actually have this set up now on my table oh. that I'm going to um, learn it. And I'm hoping to play the campaign with John. But I had been playing the um, distance, Sleeping God's Distant Skies. I played through a campaign, actually two campaigns of that. And so... I wanted to start there. I can't remember. I had a reason. Um, no, actually, I didn't start there. I started with Now and Never. I did that whole campaign. Then I went to there. And now I'm going to do this one. But it is so cool. I, I, um, I've I, played a Ryan Locke game way back. And I, I really wasn't into the story part of it then. Um, the gameplay of it was neat. It was called Above and Below. And that was kind of one of his first ones, I believe. One mm -hmm. of his first um, bigger games. He's got some smaller ones as well. But this one is has um, more mechanics and more story to it. But it's so neat because you are um, adventuring around this map and it's this um, spellbound book. Spellbound? Is that a spellbind book? Maybe Spot. I am. What is the word? <laughs> I have no idea what you're trying to say. I know everybody. Are you just trying to say like a book that has like the coil spine yeah. on it? Yeah. What's it called? Okay. Spine. I don't bound, know. Coil spine, spine bound, books. Coil bound. Whatever. It's that. <laughs> but it's this beautiful book that you open up and there's a whole bunch of different maps. In and I think there's 12 different maps. And you start on a map. If you play the campaign, you kind of go through every every one of them. But it has different spots where you're going to put these storybooks down. And those are going to be the the areas where you're going to go on an adventure and um, the book you'll open up to a certain area. Or if you have the app, which I have got the app for all the other ones so far, you'll just click on it and it'll read it to you with like voice actors, which is really cool. Oh, cool. And then it'll give you the options of what you can choose. And you basically have to do like um, tests. So it might be like a strength test or, you know, different types of um uh, skills that you have skill tests. And, uh, if you succeed, then you will usually get like some really cool things. Or if you fail, then you might lose some things or reputation or whatnot, but that's not all. You're not just adventuring. You also have to go to the town to like collect things and hire people and go to the mine and do all kinds of different things that will, um, strategically help you along on your adventures because, when you go to the adventure, then you gain all these hearts that you've kind of accumulated with different um, hired people or maybe some of your bonus cards that you've you've paid to get these extra little um, like hearts or swords for combat because you're also going to be possibly fighting different things or people or monsters. I'm not even sure yet what's in this one, but um, <laughs> you do have to fight bandits though along the way. They are in between some of the adventures and in order to get across, you have to fight this bandit. And if you don't win, you don't get across. So you have to wait and do it again the next time, but it's just so neat. And I, I just, mm -hmm. his writing is actually like, I don't know how I didn't appreciate before. I, just wanted to play mechanical games and nothing but, but now I'm really appreciating the storyline and just the, 
like how they develop this game with all these different stories that you can go to, but they kind of all intertwine because you can play in character mode in this one, which is cool where you'll go to a story, but you only look up the story for your character. So you actually will follow a whole story of your own character throughout like the whole campaign, which is so neat because like, how do they, you know, make sure everything like fit together that way, which I'm excited to, to learn, but I've learned through his, um, through distance guys, the writing and the storyline is just so cool how they, they put it all together and still have really cool mechanics in the game. So I'm really looking forward to playing this one. Um, yeah, I'm going to learn that tomorrow. Um, nice. A home alone. Um, and I have peace and quiet. <laughs> so that's, uh, <laughs> near and far. Very cool. Yeah. Near and far is so neat. I remember the first time I played it with the boys and like just reading the stories, like, what you gonna do? And like, ooh, cause you've gotta pick like, well, maybe I'll do this or maybe I'll do this. And there's different rewards depending on what you do, but it also depends on whether you're successful as well. And then it's like, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do this. I better do, you know, it's, it is interesting, very interesting decisions. And the story with it is cool. Now, one game that I got, um, when I went to Car Treat was uh, our friend Kayla gave us gift cards for Christmas for yeah, the store of Pimento so Way, which is such an amazing yeah, gift. Yeah, because then it supports the local store. And then, yeah, it was yeah. a beautiful gift. So I went on there and I was like, ooh, good. <laughs> it's like, honestly, it's like a gift card to buy a game. That's great. But the whole, what am I going to pick? <laughs> It's so like exciting as candy well. Store. <laughs> right? So I was like, ooh, okay. You're like, ooh, that could be, oh, that would be cool. So I ended up deciding so on, right? So <laughs> I, did, I ended up deciding on getting One Deck Galaxy because I have One Deck Dungeon and I went on a trip to New Brunswick back home years ago and it was just me and my cousin Samuel, who was in med school at the time, was on break. So he's like, okay, I need to clear my mind from med school and then so we played one deck dungeon almost every day for a week from noon to midnight <laughs> non stop <laughs> like we played it to death and loved it it was amazing and you start we're losing everything but as you play you gain experience and you become better and then we're starting to win and and this is like the ultimate like it's a tiny game it's almost like tiny epic size right is it cooperative and yeah oh okay yeah cool. it is cooperative or you could play it solo or two players mm -hmm. uh you could play more players if you had like multiple copies of the games but then it's kind of like they do their thing we do their thing so it's really solo or two players and you have your character and it was all female characters and then it was all like barbarian so the galaxy one i don't know <laughs> so i'm excited mm -hmm. to see and it's like multi-use card games because you have the cards that are the doors of these different dungeons you're going through and you're either going to come across a monster or a trap and you got to make your way through and when you flip the card over it'll be like okay so describe this one's a trap so you need you know, three pips of a yellow dice to make it past this portion. And you need uh, five pips of a yellow or a blue dice to make it part this portion. And you might suffer wound or loss of times. And if you lose times, like, okay, well, darn it. So we lose two times for this section that we weren't able to complete. So you're trying to complete as much as you can. But anything that can't complete on that card you take the penalty for it. So you lose two times. And if you lose two times, that means you just take from the main deck and you flip two cards over. So that means you're like wasting cards and you're going to get to the bottom of the deck and meet the big boss monster faster without having the opportunity to upgrade and build up your potions and your spells and all that stuff along the way. Right? So and then if you're successful and you pass a card, it's like, okay, great. So now we have this card and you can tuck it under your character to get more dice that you can roll. Or you could tuck it on the bottom to get this new potion ability. Or you could discard the card to get the experience points so that you can level up. So it depends on what you decide you want to do. So love this game. We played it so much. 
And now I have the Galaxy one. So I'm super excited mm. to play. Like, I've cracked it open. It's all similar components, which is amazing. You got the dice. You got all the cards. So I was just like, okay, I don't know how this one's going to play in comparison. But I'm really excited for it. So that was One Deck Galaxy. Cool. That sounds... I had no idea that's what this game was about. I don't mm. know what I kind of thought, but <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys must have, like, gotten to every card if you played that oh my god we played it to death like because there's different campaign you can do right the the different big boss monsters yeah i think we went through all of them oh but yeah we how big is the deck well i mean like it's there's a lot of cards and then there's a big boss monster cards and there's at least seven of them or more seven to twelve big boss that you can do um and then it was kind of interesting because the big boss has like the end of the thing like there's three levels to it and but yeah no it's Hmm. it's a cool game neat um i had just looked up remember i was saying oh this guy who teaches games um it's game in a nutshell nathania narthania oh okay cool nithrania he he, he's i think russian or czechoslovakian but he does speak english in this and he's very good he describes the game nice. and it's, um, and he does that a with nutshell. a lot of games. Yeah. Game in a nutshell. But if you ever watch him when you're trying to learn a game, he, he does nice. a lot of the games on there. So yeah, that's him. All right. So another one I got, and I actually got this um, when I was purchasing the games for Cartreat. So um, I had some donated from uh, CompuSoft this time, but I also bought a couple to put in our draw. But when I was there, <laughs> I had they had the starter pack for Final Girl. And I'm like, oh, fun. I wonder if I would really like this. Like, I'm usually not about the health and about this, but um, this was actually what started me off on the whole <laughs> um, campaign thing and whatnot. And so I'm like, I'm just going to give it a try. And so I bought it. And I tried it, and it's just the base pack. It's Happy Happy Camp Trails is the first um, the first one, which is basically Friday the Thirteenth. So they do okay, yeah. all these like horror movie um, synopses of like ones we watched in the eighties, nineties, right? And they just call it something else, which is clever. They don't need to get the IP, and it's it's just funny how they how they name it and how it looks. And it's very yeah. similar, but it's not exactly. But um, yeah. it's a solo game. And what you are doing is you are trying to um, kill the uh, killer, basically. Um, or, <laughs> or or stay alive, basically. But no, you do have to kill him. That's the only way you can win. So he has a certain health amount. You have a certain health amount. And you have all these people in this camp. And there's always a little map. And there's all kinds of different stories that you can play. But this one, you are, um, it's at a campground, obviously. So there's different areas in the campground. And you start with all these little yellow meeples. And those are all the campers. And then you start in a spot and the killer starts in the spot. And you have these, these hand of cards. And you start with these zero cards. But they're still like decent actions. And so what you do on your turn is you are going to play a bunch of these cards to do actions. So you have this track where it has like um, fear. I think it's um, one of the tracks is fear. And then I can't remember what the other track, the other track is kind of gives you an income of what to buy cards, but you are trying to move this fear track lower so that you can get more dice to roll during um, like, it's kind of combat, but basically when you're fighting the killer. Um, so if you can lower the fear, then you get more dice, but he raises it sometimes. So then you lose dice. So you're trying to get it as low as possible. So you can have as most dice possible because each time you play a card, um, you basically have to do like a, a skill check. Like you have to have win, like get the, the most stars you can possible stars or hearts. Now I can't remember what these ones are, but, um, so you roll, and if you got, because you usually only start with two dice, if you get two stars, then you have gotten, you've completed at the highest level, and you'll get those things. So at the beginning, you might just be trying to gain less, uh, to lower the fear, so because you want to just get more dice for everything else. So I typically will start with that, and if you succeed, you you will move up that track or down, however you want to put it, and get more dice. Now, if you fail, 
then sometimes you just lose health or you might lose, um, which is hearts and you have a track for hearts and the track for the killer's hearts. And, uh, if you lose that, then, I mean, that's fine, but you also might lose time. That's what it is. The time tracker. So if you lose time, that means you're going to have less basically currency to buy more cards for the next round. So you start with, I think it's like six cards that are at a zero level and you can use as many cards as you want in that turn, but you might want to save some for the next turn because next time, if you don't have much money to buy anything, you're only going to get maybe one card and that will be the only thing you can play. So you might save some. So after you do these actions and some of the actions can be to move, um, to move some of the campers, to get them to the safety and you save them basically and they're safe and they can't be killed. Or once you've built up some attack cards, you might move over to the killer and start attacking him. He's always going to attack you back. So it's just trying to attack him with his least um, damage possible to yourself. And there's some cards that you can buy that will give you like some protection. So it's cool. Some are like basically protection. Some are basically a big attack or whatever. But after you do your turn, then you go to your buy phase and you go and you will buy cards and with however much time you have. If you have any zero cards that are there from last round, you can take all those. But the ones you just spent go in like a pile of um, you can't buy this round. So they kind of sit in a reserve until next round. But anyway, mm -hmm. so then you buy these cards and then you go into a terror phase. Just like any, you know, cooperative game, there's a good thing and then something bad's going to happen. So he's going to either move or attack and you flip these cards and depending what it shows, he's either going to go after campers or he's going to go after you. And um, you always have to do that. And if he did end up going after a camper, then you have to roll for fear and because the campers will, or panic, it's you roll for panic and they will run away. And so they might've been close to you and you might've been close to saving them, but they panicked. And so they just took off and you're like, Oh, come back here. I was saving you. <laughs> and so then you go back into your phase and you just keep going around until one of you dies basically. And there's a really cool thing. Cause you each have this little disc at the top of your board, which you don't know what it is. You randomize them and you grab one for each game. And you might die, but if you flip that last life disc, and if there's hearts there, well, you came back to life, or he came back to life, just like in a cheesy horror movie, right? <laughs> and you have one more chance kind of thing. Like, I was playing this for, I think it was Sunday night, and I was so tired, but I still wanted to play this so bad after card <laughs> treat that I, I think I played like four or five games, and then, of course, oh, I got wow. on on the computer and I'm like, I need more. And there's like <laughs> so much. I didn't buy it all. I didn't do that, but I did buy a lot of it. But it's, uh, there's like a, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street one. There's like, it's like Nightmare on Maple Street or something. Like there's all different, there's like a, a Red Riding Hood one and uh, with That's the funny. wolf. And there's so many cool ones that I, and a Christmas one, of course. Christmas Krampus or theme wise like it sounds a lot like nyctophobia oh really well it's actually the and the, so I borrowed the game uh hostage negotiator, hostage off negotiator yeah. because I was so curious that game was made first and then they made this one and it's the same system so I wanted oh, cool. to see how that system played did so you get a chance to try it yeah I did yeah and it's, okay, it's neat it's um and that one also has a lot of expansion and stuff and I just wanted yeah. to see I'm like ooh. I just want to see how they started Because I had played Hostage Negotiator on an app, and I quite enjoyed it. And I was like, no, okay, well, then I want to get the card game version of it. So, yeah, But I haven't no, played the uh, card version yet. So, yeah, no, But Nyctophobia is like you place blindfold and you play blind, and you're yeah. in a forest, and it's all by feel. It's like, oh, these when are When you turn the trees, lights so off or something, right? You don't need to. With oh, the blindfold, blindfold, you can't see. One person can can see this kind of like runs the thing <laughs> so they'd be like okay well you're over here so it's like you have your character that like mine's a plus sign or whatever okay i feel like that okay now to the north of you oh there's just a hole i can move that way okay and then to the it's like oh pokey trees and it's like and you're going blind trying to remember where you've gone but then there's this axe murderer in the woods so you're trying to get back to the car so you can get out of there so theme wise it sounds similar mm -hmm. um but yeah, that sounds like a neat yeah. one. It's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And just be perfect spooky month. I'll be playing it all month. But 
I'll be playing it a lot before then too. It's really cool. Nice. It's one you can also play with somebody cooperative and you just choose together. Like I think I will right. try it with John because he asked. It's funny because I put, I was like, ooh, I can put these like under my VCR because they just look like movies kind of. So yeah, yeah. I rearranged everything so I don't even take up shelf space. I put it there. I bought the player mats, which come in this box that looks like a VCR. So I put oh, a little cool. um, a modem thing on top. So if you go in the living room, you wouldn't even know there's games there. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, what are those movies? And I'm like, oh, that's a game. Those are games. <laughs> but they just look like movies. So, Well, they, they, they play like a movie. So that's Yeah, great. they do. Yeah. But I think cool. he would probably like it. We'll have to try it one day. Nice. Cooperative. Yeah. So another one that I picked up, and this one was, I don't know who picked this one for me. I think, well, Bernie or Kayla or somebody. And it was from one of the sales after like year end sales that they had. Mm -hmm. And I had played it before because our friend Sasha, who actually ended up uh, attending Car Treat as well, a few years ago, he had gone to Essen and he's like, oh, hey, yeah. and he had brought like a box full and he's like, had asked me if I wanted anything. I was like, oh, I feel bad. I can't make you pick up stuff while you're there. But I was like, hey, a tiny little card game if you find. And he did. So he came over to my house to drop it off and we ended up playing a few games and this is one that he had picked up there that wasn't available in north america yet it is now and it's called swindler and and i'm trying to remember it's like we're pickpocketers and yeah. you're going to be going into these different bags trying to draw stuff out of the bag trying to steal certain things and then you go depending on what you still, but like as you things push are taking out of too. the back. Yeah. Cause as yeah. things are coming out, like there's different, I don't know if it's like you could get arrested or there's a police symbol that might come out. Like you're trying to get the goods out. Right. Mm -hmm. But then as the bags get picked clean, it's like, Oh no, they've gone to that location quite a bit. There's <laughs> probably not a lot left there. So I'm not going to go there. I'm going to try to go here. But then as you go to the, um, what is it like the it's not the thrift store what is it that buy second hand uh, i can't remember i played it the uh, first car treat he taught us yeah so you would go like to this location to sell the stuff you've pickpocketed and get money from it and then they will make their way back into the bag it's like oh this location's good again like it's just got refilled so you can go there again but it's and then yeah, i was like okay do you pull out more do you stop and it's like you, you, you're like you but you know so it was really interesting i quite enjoyed the first play of it so then i at car treat i was like it was available in north america now and it was on sale so i'm like yes please so i now have my own copy of swindler i need to play it again because it was years ago mm -hmm. that i played it that first time i just remember quite enjoying the play of it and the the push your luck element and the different things that we were trying to accomplish so because you got like orders that you're trying to complete as well it's like okay well if i've got these and i can go and complete like this order now and um and that's gonna bug me it's not a thrift store but it's i can't remember like what a second hand like, store not at all no but yeah at three o'clock yeah. in the morning when it comes back to me i'll give you a call yeah. let you know <laughs> yeah. it's like, it takes a lot but um yeah so that was really cool awesome. so i remember really enjoying my gameplay now i own it i can play it again and that is a swindler i have one more that i bought that i'll talk about but um sacha sasha he's i just love playing games with him he's such a good like opponent he plays we were he was playing kutna horror with us and he he will like you know, as he's strategizing, he'll go, what do you think? What do you think would be the best thing for me to do? And when somebody asks that, it's always like, like, they're not threatened at all. They just want to mm. like, what is your opinion? And he just wants the best for everybody too. Like he's just, yeah. he's really, I really enjoy playing with him. He's a really good opponent to play with, but yeah, just had to add that. <laughs> <Just love him. laughs> anyway, my last game that I bought was again, when I was buying the games through card treat. And this was Isla and Something Shiny. Now, this oh. is another solo game. And it's a big, okay. well, a big box. It's a, a campaign game. And it's, um, at first I thought, I had talked to our friend Kayla about it. And I was like, is this a kid's game? Because <laughs> it's like got this it little sounds meme. like it'd be a kid's game. <laughs> yeah, and it's this little like um, kind of Japanese art bunny with like 
Oh, you know, okay. he's trying to find something shiny in the mountain. And I'm like, oh, really? This is like for us. But anyway, so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to try it because I had did had watched the playthrough before. But um, so what you're doing is you have these chapters that you go through and you are Isla, you are the bunny and you are trying to find something shiny in the mountains and you have to go through these um, chapters in order to get to that. But you start at the tree. And so you have this little cartoon that you read. It's this little pamphlet. And then at the end, it shows you how to set up the game. And so you have this little board in front of you. And you have certain cards that you put in this little um, this little box. And they are ordered specifically. And you basically will go through them. You'll take the card out, put it face up. And it's gonna, it's basically like a choose your own adventure every card. So you place the card in front of you and it'll say, um, do you want to do this or do you want to do this? And you make a choice and then you have to look on the card and it'll either have arrows to put it to the left, which is you put it in your past and you'll never see that card again, or it goes to your future and it'll go back into a deck that you'll shuffle for your next round. So you make all these choices and what you're doing is gaining resources and like little magic tokens or knowledge and things and you don't know at first really what why and what you're gaining these for but you soon you quickly will learn as the cards come up you need to pay some to like get more cards into there or you might have to like you come across battles that you have to fight and you might need to gain like more strength and all these different things but it's neat how it's played because so then once you finish that deck you have this card that you need to complete like the, your your goal for the game and you have seven uh, days to do it which is seven rounds and so each round you have to put on a knowledge which is this little green um book basically uh sorry no it's uh is it knowledge or it's something else knowledge is, is the gray books it's something green energy i believe anyway you put it on there and then you start again you shuffle all the cards that you gathered in your future and you put them back and you go again and so the first like you start with the first chapter and you might have to have gained i don't know eight carrots which is the food so you place them on as you get them at the end of the round and once you complete it you've won the chapter and you move on to the next well they get harder and harder and harder and like at first you're like now nah, this is easy i'm just doing this and to get that and then but as you go, then you get these bigger, like, things to fight. You have to go through a mine. And then there's, like, these little tiles that you have to, like, um, find your way through this mine. You meet friends. You fight a bunch of gangs. And you do all kinds of things in here. And I just loved it because it's it's nice as a campaign where, um, like, playing, like, Distant Skies, it's never-ending. And it's, like, I'm just playing it for hours and hours and I lose time. Whereas this one you play a game and you can like let it, you know, leave it alone, come back, play another game. And there's a beginning and an end to it. So it's, it's neat how you work through it. And then once you get to the end, there's different endings. So you might have, I did get to the end. I didn't have the ideal ending. So I'm going to have to go through the whole thing again, because I think I know what I did that made me get to that bad ending. So I'm going to start over and and do it but it's also something i've started collecting games for my grandchildren my future grandchildren that i don't have or there's none on the way right now but um this is one thing i would play with them so i have we have a friend murray and i had said you should play this with your daughter because i think because he had played um what was it stuff fables with her or something oh okay yeah and so it's kind of got that vibe to it so he's gonna borrow it from me at Gobfest and play through it with her nice. and just to see how it'll do but yeah that was the last one that i bought so nice well the day before car treat somebody posted games for sale on the board game exchange facebook group and kayla tagged me to it says "Ooh, melanie Barr, aren't you looking for this which is horrible because you know we, we we call like our game group we call ourselves enablers and <laughs> We really are. So then I was like, oh, yes, yes, I do want this. So I reached out and then bought the game. And then I contacted Travis and he says, I think that's right near Bernie. See, because he might be able to pick it up right away. So I contacted Bernie. He's like, oh, yeah, she's like five minutes from me. So 
Then he picked it up the night before Car Treat and brought it to Car Treat. And that is Everdale Far Shore. Hooray! So, yeah, I played this for the first time with you um, at the Calgary Tabletop Day. Now, I've never played Everdale. And we played Everdale Far Shore. And then I think the fact that this also was like right after I came back from my trip to New Brunswick made this so nostalgic for me with the little lobsters or the crabs and then yeah, the, the, the crab. nautical theme. And then you have like the seaweed that has that gross texture of a seaweed. And then you have like the sea glass that's all like sea glass you can't see quite through. And like the, everything about it was just like give me that sense of home feel as well. Um, and actually, me and Lee played it yesterday, and then I was like, "Okay, well, yeah, how'd it go?" Well, I, I, it was, it, it was good. Like it was, it's, you know what? Kind of playing it again, I was like, "Okay, how complicated is it to for me to teach?" But it's, it's a pretty straightforward oh, yeah. game. It is totally. Um, it's just really like with the cars and what you collect, and then how you're able to build from it. And then the first round is like, "Wow." I, I uh, my turn is over. I need to go to spring already. Like it's like holy crow, we're not accomplishing anything. But then you get more workers as you go, so it kind of gets a little bit. You get to do a bit more and more and more. But it is just such an interesting game. I really like it. I love love the theme. I adore the components. They're just beautiful, um, and just that home feel that it gives me is just amazing. And I have my own copy now, and so we got to play it and. The cards are all sleeved. So oh, really? We don't sleeve cards normally. No. But these are all sleeved. I was like, oh, here, you need to shuffle these. And <laughs> he started shuffling. And they went everywhere. Oh, they're so slippery. Yeah. So he's like, I don't think I like our sleeves card. But it was, <laughs> it was funny. Um, but yeah, no, so, so glad this is part of my collection. Now, this is not the last game that I picked up at Car Treat by far, but I'm not going to talk about every one of them <laughs> i did end up doing like an unboxing video or game haul video oh, yeah. on my youtube channel as well my car treat game haul so you could see them all there but um yeah so far shore is uh was the latest one added no it's not because i bought dice veggies that day and i also ended up buying call to adventure from the the little game sale corner because you have like a whole corner where people can sell games i i tried not that to one look. interested was, me too it well i kind of opened the box and i was like this is one that i picked up i put it back i picked up and put it back like for years now i was like do i want this one and it's like eh? yes no okay so i was been on the fence with it a long time i wasn't sure how it plays at all i still don't know and then when it, he had it there because it was travis selling it and i'm like ah. Oh. and i opened the box and it's like nice big tarot size cards and there's like these trays with lids with like these really cool rune type components in there and i'm like yeah i'm buying it on look alone <laughs> on looks alone so yeah, i was like ah oh, fine uh travis i owe you money <laughs> <laughs> but yeah now also travis was organizing a every little bit helps kind of fundraiser for our friend john and we also recorded that car treat all the winners because what he was doing he was selling these little board game wooden bits for five bucks a piece and anybody who entered then would kind of get into this game draw um and he had like amazing board game for sales and i've recorded so we recorded the the draw and it was hilarious because jerry came up to us and she's making faces as we we're like facing the camera <laughs> And we're trying to make us laugh, not realizing there's a mirror behind us. So she's in the video. She's hilarious. Oh, I love it. I was like, oh my God, that's just perfect. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, shoot, mirror. And it kind of scurries over. But it was funny. Um, but yeah, so Car Treat was a great, amazing fun. Next um, retreat we're going to is Gob Fest. Yeah, a couple weeks here. It's like 20 days or so. Like it's coming right up. Yeah. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I know like on our group chat, they've been like, oh, there's one more opening here. If anybody wants to go and play with us over here. And it's like, Melanie, there's one opening. It's like, <laughs> am I not registered for something already? There's like, oh yeah, you <laughs> you signed up to do this. And it's like, so we're all, we're like, everybody's getting really excited for, for Gobfest. So that's mm -hmm. exciting coming up. Yeah. 
Then our next, well, this is February right now. So it's Faljuary. Yes. And we have been, well, I know I'm assuming you have, but I've been making yep. a point of getting my Fel, uh, Stefan Feld games played. Uh, and I've played a few that had been on my shelf of shame I had never played before. So just I was able to learn them. Um, so kind of dusting some of these off. Um, we're going to do a top nine or less. <laughs> I don't think I have owned or played nine, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> See what we end up with. Uh, so top nine-ish, Stefan Feld is going to be our next episode. Um, so, And then the episode after that, we're saying we're going to do our... Because we started doing like a few weeks, well, quite a few weeks back now. We did our top nine games older than 2000. That was published before the year 2000. So now we're going to do from 2000 to 2005 and our top games from games that are published during that era yeah. so and then we're also going to do up. we're also going to yes. do an audio escape room that we interviewed Matthew a while ago and he's designed this I'm kind of yeah. scared because he's very smart and <laughs> well yeah there's we like nothing like together. putting us on the, the spot and see <laughs> yeah. how bad we really are at these games because <laughs> I, I don't I always solve the murder on my fun. first try <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be fun so we're gonna do that because it's on, an it's audio one, one right yeah it's an audio so so I mean, we're yeah we're gonna be podcast, playing so. it not live because it's gonna get posted afterwards right. but we're gonna be playing it real time on our episode and see, see how bad we do <laughs> all right but no, no pressure yeah but you've been playing lots of those lately. We should, we, you, should, you know, you might have to carry. I haven't torture. been playing a lot lately, so Get I should, I should start practicing. <laughs> we need to own our skills. Yeah, that's funny. So yeah, no, that's gonna be super exciting. Yeah. I'm actually really excited to do that. I know. And really then fun. Lee's, <laughs> me and Lee, the biggest enabler in my life is my spouse by far. <laughs> so he was away to Edmonton for uh, teaching stuff that he was teaching. And he came back and he's got to go back in April. And he's like, well, I was thinking maybe you could book that week off and come with me. Cause then it's a cheap vacation for us. He's Where like, and this? I know you uh, in Edmonton. Oh, okay. <clears throat> He's like, and I know you got lots of board game people there and a lot mm -hmm. of board game store. And then he's like, so you could come and spend the week and buy board games. <laughs> And I'm like, you bought a bike, didn't you? <laughs> and he did. He had to rent a trailer because he bought a bike went in Edmonton and he brought it back. And I'm telling my friend about it. She's like, oh, my God, he bought a second bike. And I started laughing. I'm like, second, try fifth. <laughs> so, oh we got, so we're like. Oh, we're, we're so bad. He's like, I'm not giving her any hard time about the game she gets because she can't say anything when I bring a bike. Yeah, and so we're like feeding each other. That's, that's <laughs> bad. That is so bad. But yeah, so I'll be in Edmonton for the week of kind of one of the mid April. And I'm kind of, you know, going to make a point of going to visit the game stores there and then trying to during the day, meet up with some people to play a few games. Nice. So if you're in Edmonton, hook me, uh, you know, look me up. Maybe we can connect. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's all. Now, before we end it, Carla, where can we find you? I'm at Instagram, um, board game specialist, all one word. And I have a Facebook page, Red Deer Board Game Fanatics. What about you? Well, we first of all have our Discord channel, so be sure to check us out on there. We've actually been really active on there. It's been yeah, fun. Yeah, we're posting a lot of our plays on there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then um, on Instagram, it's Mel's underscore board game underscore room. My Facebook page is Mel's board game room, and my YouTube channel is Mel's board game room. So thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and we will see you at the next episode. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye.